Hello Potters, welcome back to Pottery Plus. It's wonderful as always to see you. I'm following up today with a part two to the, the first video I did about um, a beginner's guide to pricing your work if you're just starting to get into sales. Um, someone had asked me about different sales platforms and I wanted to address that. I've been saying I was gonna do it forever and it's just taken me a long time to get my thoughts together on this topic. Um, but you've heard me say before, I don't wanna give bad information and so I kind of decided to answer that question in a different direction than I think it was asked. So if you're the person who asked this, um, jump on, give me some more feedback. If you watch the video, let me know if this was helpful. But I think the question was aimed more at comparing different online sales platforms. And really, I don't have enough expertise to talk about that. But what I do have experience in is trying out all different kinds of sales opportunities. So I kind of wanted to talk about selling your work online versus in person today. And this video is kind of more geared towards like my functional potter friends like me. Um, like you sell things that are made to be utilitarian for people. Though They also certainly cro cross over into that um, world of an artwork. But um, if you're making uh, functional pieces, that can kind of really affect pricing and the way people perceive your pricing. So this video would be for folks who may be making work like that. Not that functional work doesn't sometimes go up into really high pricing, that certainly happens, but um, more often than not, I would say uh, the public at large expects our prices to be low because they have an idea of what the objects that we make are, are supposed to cost or what they usually cost. So what I mean by that is the average customer has much a, a much greater frame of reference for what like a mug or a bowl should cost as opposed to say a painting or a sculpture. Okay. So that's why I'm kind of gearing this video towards uh, you who are making things like, like that, that are functional. Now I just wanted to quickly say also, um, I have done an Etsy, Etsy page, Etsy shop, and my experience with Etsy was good, but that's the only online sales platform that I have experience with. Okay. So I'm just Speaking from an Etsy perspective when I'm doing this little compare and contrast. So let's start there. Let's start with Etsy. Um, so I had an Etsy shop that was like a combination of my work and work that I curated because I just think that's fun. Like I love to, I just love selecting things and, and putting collections together and groupings together. So that was kind of what my shop was. It certainly wasn't like just a collection of Caroline and showcasing myself. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that. I was just kind of, I was just kind of playing around with it. You know, I wasn't taking it too seriously. And I think at that time, the percentage that they took from each sale, like the total, like ending final total of the sale was like around four or 5%. And that has increased. And I know that I've heard a lot of fodder about um, people not liking that Etsy is increasing kind of steadily every year, increasing their cost to the artists and the shop owners on the site. And while that is frustrating, um, and I'm sure they will keep increasing, like right now I think they're at like 6.5% plus your fees that you have to pay to them. So, you know, you've got like your monthly fee and, and that kind of thing. Um, it's still like, to me, Etsy still, after everything that they take, it's a more reasonable percentage that you're losing from your work, especially when you're trying to keep reasonable price points. It, it works much better than trying to sell your work in person. Okay. So kind of keep in mind, like, I guess if you wanted to round up, I don't want to say something dumb, you guys, but I think this is right. I think if you round up with everything that you pay paid for your Etsy shop for a month, I think it would probably, I mean, going really high, they probably take like 15% of your profits. Um, and I would say, again, I'm going high on that, but I think like, even if you get like the super premium, like subscription that you can get and all of that kind of stuff, like boost your, um, like boost your visibility and things like that. I still don't think it would get to be more than 15% and probably not, probably not even that. Um, especially if like your sales are doing really well. I mean, that of course is always a factor too, but like if you started really popping off on Etsy, um, I just don't think their fees and, and their percentage splits would be like, um, 
uh, barring you from making a, a decent profit. Okay, I guess that's what I'm getting at. Long story short, I'm just saying that I don't think Etsy is a horrible deal. Now, going back to the fact that they are like slowly increasing every year, um, they might get to a point where it's not reasonable and affordable for people anymore. But I think as of right now, like Etsy is okay. And my experience with Etsy was good. I liked it. Um, you know, shipping your stuff out can be like when you're shipping things like we are that are breakable, that can be kind of stressful sometimes, but you know, that's not an Etsy problem. That's just a, that's just a part of what you deal with when you get into sales of pottery. So that's kind of my take on Etsy. And I think a lot of the other online like sales platforms, the, the cost of them are probably pretty comparable. Um, cause you know, they all have to stay competitive with each other and they've got to stay competitive with Etsy because that's sort of like currently the most widely known one. Okay. So that kind of covers Etsy. Now I just wanted to compare quickly, uh, that experience, my Etsy experience to my experience selling work in person. So this would be at galleries, festivals, group shows. Um, even like I did like some commission work for, for like a, a really cool place here in town. Actually, it was an awesome experience, but, um, a commission for like a little gift shop that, um, they wanted like some, uh, some pieces that were like, well, merch for them, basically. They just wanted like some cool handmade merch by like a, a local artist. So that that's kind of my range of experience. Like I did Renegade Craft Fair. If you've heard of Renegade Craft Fair, that's kind of a big one. Um, so just some different things like that. And what I have found through those experiences is that like if the gallery will, like if you're in a gallery and they take 50% of your profits, that's like that's pretty much the best deal that you can kind of get is that they take 50%. Um, and I know that sounds, might sound like kind of outrageous, but the thing is with galleries and this goes for festivals as well, you guys, it's kind of the same thing. Festivals do it a little differently because they'll charge you like a booth rent or sometimes they'll take a percentage, but, um, the, like what they take might come in a little different format, but any like in-person sales experience is, um, it's going to be more costly because they're providing a space. They're providing you with an audience. There's usually events that go along. Like if it's a gallery, your show might be up for a month, but they're probably going to pay for an opening night, like an opening event and maybe other little events like intermingled throughout the time that your work is there. So they're, they're paying for all that. So I know when you hear 50%, it's like, oh my gosh, that's a robbery. But with in-person sales opportunities, you're just, they're, they're having to output a lot more than like Etsy does, you know? So there's just a lot more, um, physical, uh, pieces to it that's required to do those in-person sales. So I would say that like for us, when, again, going back to the idea that people think that they know the expected prices on our work, if we're functional potters, it's really, really hard to adjust your prices like by just adding 50% to the cost of a mug or 60% to the price of a bowl because it, it kind of starts to lose, like it doesn't make sense to most people anymore. Now, I do think it's all in context. I mean, if you're showing in a high art pottery um, center gallery, that would probably be a great opportunity. But I know that like, some of the shows I did were more generalized galleries. And so like people weren't coming there to look at pottery all the time. And so again, compensating for that 50, 60, 70% um, split that the gallery was taking, uh, I wasn't able to compensate for it because I felt like it would make my prices look just too high. So that is something to think about you guys. And if you watched my first video on pricing, I really believe that we should pay ourselves reasonably for what we do. And so to me, I eventually kind of felt priced out of those, those gallery or commission or festival um, experiences, because at that time I was really, I would just tell myself like, Oh, I'm getting great exposure. Um, but the hours and hours and hours that I would spend, uh, to make little collections for these different opportunities, like I just know that I was not able to compensate myself financially fairly for that. And I wouldn't take back any of those experiences. I wouldn't discourage you from doing those experiences because exposure is important and networking is important. 
Um, if you get an opportunity, let's say, for example, to do a show or a festival with like a lot of other high level potters, uh, but they're taking 80%, it might be worth it for you just to go and network with those other potters. I don't know. So you have to weigh all of that. I mean, that's kind of getting off of the topic of pricing, but in sales in general, there's a lot of factors that you want to include. But um, yeah, like if, if you just know that you're going to be getting paid like a few dollars an hour after you calculate all this stuff out, maybe consider going online or um, yeah, maybe even opening up your own website. I think it's a lot harder to get traffic when you're trying to sell through your own website. You kind of have to start by word of mouth. So that has its own challenges. But um, yeah, just another way to, to be able to get the prices that you think are fair and um, compensate for whatever platform you're using to help you sell your work without it just being like impossible to pay yourself a reasonable wage. So that is the thoughts that have come up for me in, um, uh, in the face of being asked that question. And again, I know it's not probably exactly what you were looking for, but I hope it adds to the conversation of sales because it is another angle that can get really, um, hard to deal with and there's just no like 100% right or wrong way. So I just kind of wanted to put that out there and um, follow up on what I said I was going to do for several weeks. Gosh, I guess it's been a few months now since um, that part one came out. So anyway, I'm so glad if you joined me to the end. I know this is a bit of a dry topic. So thanks for hanging out and um, I hope you have an awesome rest of your day. We're going to probably be kicking off the fall with some videos that are a little bit different. Uh, this channel was started, of course, to do pottery tutorials, but it's also always been my intention to bring in some like other generalized art content. And so I think we're going to be getting started on that pretty soon. And I'm really excited about that. But if there's anything you want to see, want to know about, want to talk about, drop it in the comments below and love ya. We'll see you soon. Have a great rest of your day. Bye. Bye pottery plus. Bye. Love ya.